So, I'm here because of Peter. He couldn't be here. Obviously, he broke his leg. But as I said in the prayer, I think and I believe that nothing is at, um, by mistake. Yeah? And I believe that this message I have to share with you this morning is because somebody in here needs to hear it. So while I was praying there, I was thinking, why, why do I have to speak this? And I felt like, well, the somebody really needs to hear that. So I'm going to share with you some personal stuff that happened in my life. And um, yeah, so for those who don't know me, I'm Marius. This wonderful accent is from Romania. I've been living on the island since 2009, moved in the UK in 2008. I am married. My wife is back there, and we do have four wonderful children, two boys, two girls, with age between 11 and 18 years old. Yeah. A couple of years ago, My son had a girlfriend, so he's 18 now. And um, I don't know how long it's gone, uh, it was his relationship for, but I knew about it. I didn't ask him anything about it until later after, obviously, he broke uh, his relationship. And I asked him, how was it? And he was like, well, I didn't like it. I said, why? Well, he kept asking me to stay with her, to spend time with her. I wanted to go play football with my friends, and it was really annoying. So I broke it up. I said, well, <clears throat> my son, everything has got a place in the life. Everything has got its right time in the life. And just bear with me a second. something new for me. Right. Um, I just want to read from Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. Uh, sorry, chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every mother under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sue, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. So I told my son, look, you are 16 years of age. You don't need this in your life. There's a time for love. When is the time? At the moment, you have to finish your school, you have to focus on your exams, you have to focus on your sports, you have to focus on your relationship with God. So, when is the right time for a young person to start having a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Can they get involved in a relationship, in a physical relationship? And if so, how far they can go. To answer to these questions, we have to understand that there are two different views. One is the secular world, and the other one is the Word of God. So, what is the world teaching us? So the world is constantly sending us a message Try before buy. So, you know what I mean. 
For a child God to be subjected to this message is really difficult. So if you don't have a close relationship with God, you, if your foundation is not solid with God, it's really, really difficult to understand what you can and what you can't do. If you put your heart as, as a young person to, to look into the, these answers, we, we are just one click away for everything nowadays. So if I want to know how the weather is in, in Scotland, for instance, I just go online and, well, I don't have to go online because I know it's wet and rainy. <laughs> but if I need to find something, I'll just go online and I can know anything I want to. So what I'm trying to say is for a young person to look in such things, it's really, it's really difficult to sort out and to sift what is right and what is wrong if you don't have a basic, well, it's not a basic, a good understanding of the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? In Genesis 2.24 says that this is why a man will leave his father and mother and will be united with his wife and they will become one flesh. When I was 16, I left home because I had to go to a different town for study. So for six, no, when I was 14, for six years, Nine months out of 12, I was away from home, away from my parents, away from my family. In those years, looking back now, I can see that God had a plan for me. I didn't know anything about God before the age of 14. I was exposed to church when we had to go to funerals or weddings, and that was it. But in my class, I had a friend, I had a colleague who was a Christian, and he started speaking one by one to us about God. So in a couple of years, out of 11 boys that we were living in the same dorm, nine, we were going to church. So that was amazing. We were praying together in the bedroom, we were praying together at school before studies, why am I telling you this? I just want you to build up a picture that in these years, I started knowing God. So <clears throat> by the end of school, I got in love with high school sweetheart, like you do. And after we finished studies, so I started high, after school, high school, I've done a post-secondary school for two years. So in Romania, I trained as a physiotherapy nurse, well, physiotherapy assistant here. And we were planning to, to get married. We had all the dates fixed, everything. My wife and my boys know about this, so I'm safe. My relationship wasn't the right one. I felt in my heart that <clears throat> this is not what God wanted for me. But I was in love with this girl and I wanted to marry her no matter what. So I knew that if I'm going to marry this, this girl, I, I, I'm not going to be happy because at that point, I knew the word of God, and my relationship wasn't a good one. In the end, she broke up the relationship with me, so <clears throat> I was devastated. For six months, all I was doing was going to work, came back home, eat, sleep, woke up, go to work, 
and so on and so on for six months. I wouldn't talk with anybody, not even with my parents. So I, was, I, was, I suffered a lot. But then I started to come into my, my senses. I started frequent, to frequent a local church and I made the decision to follow God properly. And I started praying and I pray this every day. I said, God, in the past, I was the one who chose what's right for me. I chose a girl to be my wife and it ended up badly. I pray that you take away that girl out of my heart and I pray that you'll give me a wife. So I was 20 at that time. So I started pray when I started praying. I got involved in a church uh, activity and one evening we went to this evangelical event and I stayed there. And at the end, the people in front of the, of the church said, we need help. To, to clear the stage. So I stayed late in the evening. With me, there are many, many uh, youngsters from the local church. I didn't know them because I was quite shy and I just stayed aside. And, but when we were walking back, it was summer, when we were walking back, we were the same group, but as I said, I was walking quite away from, from the main group and one by one, they started coming and speaking with me. There are two boys, two girls, I can't remember how many. Elena was in, 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 in that group. So after a couple of youngsters that they came and approached me, talked to me, we were walking. Elena came to me and she approached me and she just asked me, are you all right? I can't remember what she said. It was a bit dark, so I couldn't, I couldn't really see her face. I couldn't distinguish her but I knew who she was. The second when she approached me and she started talking to me, it was like somebody was whis has whispered into my ear, she's the one you're praying for. And I was like, okay. So something happened inside, my, my, inside of me. Why I'm saying this is <clears throat> when you decide To listen to God, God is faithful, and when you trust Him, He's got the best, the best thing for you. So he, prepare, he prepared everything that you need just for you. All you have to do is ask. Obviously, from that moment is history. We got married few years later, and we have four wonderful children. In order for you to be in, in God-centered romantic relationship, you must first to find personal fulfillment in, in Christ. So the stronger your faith in God is, the better you will be able to love the other person. I'm going to ask somebody, I share somebody, there's few people know my, my, they knew my tes testimony before and I'm going to ask a young person who I shared this, my story, my tes testimony a couple of years ago, Robin, would you mind to come? And he will tell you what that meant for him. Yeah, sorry, I forgot I agreed to this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Marius told me his testimony when we were here for a worship practice. And I'd just come out of a relationship as well, like Marius. And uh, I remember him telling me, like, you're at a crossroads now. You've got to decide where you're going to go. Are you going to go, you know, back to the world or are you going to continue with the Lord? 
and he made it very clear about what happened to to you, Mary, so that uh, he'd very much had that experience as well. And obviously, I picked the Lord because I'm here. But um, yeah, it was it was um, it was like a really bad decision when I was like uh, 19, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And so, what I there's, I don't regret much in my life, but I do regret um, doing that deeply because I, it's, it stopped me from getting uh, with my wife sooner. I could have been, you know, uh, dating Jess for another six years. We could have had another six years worth of memories or something like that. And, and I didn't do that because I decided to go uh, rogue. Um, <laughs> but fortunately, I, I am married now to my lovely wife. Jesse and uh, <laughs> but yeah don't give in to the temptation children teenagers it's not worth it man what is it it says in the uh, proverbs no I won't say that because it's pretty brutal but uh, <laughs> look don't do it it's not worth it just uh, it's the word of God yeah it's like a uh, a bad woman is worse than death. That's what it says. So, and I'm sure it applies to men as well. A bad geezer is worse than death. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, yeah, is that is that all right, Marius? Sound, yeah. Stay in church, kids. Thank you, Ruben. So that saved the day. So what do you have as a young person, but not only as a young person, as a person who is looking for a relationship? So in 2 Corinthians chapter... Oh, I need this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 says, Stop forming inappropriate relationships with unbelievers. Can right and wrong be partners? Can light have anything in common with darkness? Can Christ agree with the devil? Can a believer share life with an unbeliever? Hopefully, all right. Okay, so. What does that mean? It means that if you are in a relationship with a non-Christian person, yeah, what is the goal? What is, you know, how will end up a relationship? What are you looking for a re relationship if you are a non-Christian person? Obviously, you look just for physical attraction. So the Word of God says, stop forming inappropriate relationships with, with unbelievers. Why is that? Because you cannot pray with an unbeliever. An unbeliever cannot understand you that you want to get closer to God. An unbeliever can support your walk with God. Yeah? So, If that's the case, praying together before you, your dates is a great idea. You just ask God to help keep your physical desires in check and to bless your conversations and relationships. Don't look to spend time by yourself, just the two of you. Don't stay behind closed doors. Yeah? Look for common interests. You, you have activities at church. You can get together at church. I remember when I was with Elena, we were together in a washing band. We were going camping together. So we, we didn't spend time just ourselves. We were in the groups. In the group, you can see how a person is relating, first of all, to God, is relating to others, is relating to you. So just keep it safe. Yeah, don't kiss on the couch, how to say. So don't stay inside there by yourselves because f 
flesh is weaker, but the spirit is strong, but flesh is weaker. That's what the, God, the, the word of God says to us. So if I put my heart into serving God, but I subject myself and I stay uh, behind closed doors, I subject myself to, to temptations. So it's better to run away from it. Yeah? Really important, be honest with your, uh, with your parents. Be honest with them. Be open with them. Because if they trusted you, you, have, you can have a relationship with somebody. That means that you have to be open with them. Yeah? I know it, it sounds horrifying for a young person to be open with their parents. Yeah? But keep them in a loop and allowing your parents to keep you accountable with, with curfews, physical intimacy, then you're showing them that they made the right decision in trusting you. And it's really important to be, well, it's a bit sensitive what I'm saying, what I have to say, it, yeah? Be sexually poor, pure when you're alone too. Watching wrong stuff online and doing wrong stuff when you are by yourself is not going to be helpful in your relationship. In fact, it's more likely to be harmful whether or not you are dating. Having a sexually pure mind and body is still vitally important. And we find this in First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, it is God that will keep you away from sexual sin as a mark of your devotion to him. So each of you should know that finding a husband or wife for yourselves is to be done in a holy and honorable way, not in a passionate, lustful way of people who don't know God. So what is lust? Lust is to have strong sexual desire for someone. This is the initial driving force that attracts us to a potential partner. So we reach to the point where we can't go any further than what? You have that, that strong drive, yeah? You are, you are looking for a relationship with, with the other person. You're lusting for them. And you reach to that point where you had a relationship. What happens next? What happens when those feelings are going away? Is that because, because of that? Divor uh, divorces are happening because you're losing that passion and you look for something else. Run away. When things get too hot and heavy, call it a day or night or whatever, call it a night or whatever, and just put some physical distance between the two of you. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 18 and 20 says, Flee from sexual immorality. Say good night or see you tomorrow and get yourself a two cold shower. God has promised that no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So as I said before, just go away. You have the temptation. God has given you the power to run away from it. Don't get in, in, into it. Just run away from it. It's not impossible to stay physically pure or even to remain a virgin. Matthew 19, 26 says, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Many, many believers has, have had the relationship and still, still stayed virgins until they were married. If it's too late for that, you can still repent now and start over fresh. Because your heavenly father will forgive you. Will forgive your, fa or your past no matter what. We can't change our past. 
but we can change our future. In 1 John 1, 19, 1, 9, God is faithful and reliable. If we confess our sins, he forgives them and cleans us from everything we've done wrong. So that's my final word to say to you. God is faithful and reliable. If we confess our sins, he forgives them and cleanses us from everything we've done wrong. Young and old, man and woman. So, if you are here today and you would like help, you like prayer, we're here to help you. I'm not see, saying this to judge you, I'm saying this in love. All I've said, I've said in love. If you need help, come here. We're going to pray for you. We're going to support you. We're going to help you. If you want to make things right in your relationship, just make that faithful step and come to God today. Father God, we come before you and we understand that you want us to be pure before you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus who cleansed us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who talked to us today and taught us how to stay pure in our thoughts, in our relationship before you. In the name of Jesus, amen.